Just a quick warning, we have no idea what any of these say. I haven't opened any of them yet. So if you see any sudden cuts, sudden bleep outs, someone's probably told us that we suck or something. People have asked us questions or whatever, but we're going to play them and uh, we're going to answer them together. The first voice note is from Jude Simpkins. Let's go, Jude. Name five F1 circuits which are not currently on the calendar. Oh, that Five was, that F1 was sweet. circuits that are not currently on the calendar. Come on, Fab. Qatar? Yeah. Because of the World Cup. Because of the World Cup. Um, um, Russia, Sochi. Yeah. Um, Can we say Brands Hatch? It's technically an F1 circuit. They've raced there before. I don't know if it's still F1 grade or not. I don't know oh. if the FIA have still approved it or not, but... Fuck it, I'm taking that because I can't think and of And that Germany one, Hike, that we spoke about in the last episode where they're trying to get it for the next one. Hike and, hike and something. Heineken, okay, four. That's four. Oh, was it four? That's four, that's hey, all he wanted. We that's all it. he wanted, Jude, there you go. Thanks, Jude. That is all he wanted, four. This is John Smith. If you were given the opportunity to drive any F1 car from history at any track of your choice, which car would you choose and where would you drive it? Any F1 car, any track, wow. where would we drive it? Wow. Well, I'm going for a car without the halo. I mean, I'd probably be safer with a car with a halo, but I wouldn't be able to see a thing with that big pole in my face. Mm. Apparently you can, we just can't on the game. Apparently it's in your blind spot, in the mm. middle of your eyes. I can see how it would be in your blind spot. Okay, maybe I should have a halo, actually. Thinking about this properly, I'm not an F1 driver. Interesting. Think I'll put a halo and a helmet on. Yeah, and maybe wrap yourself in bubble, bubble wrap. wrap. <laughs> And make sure there's no one anywhere near the track. Because yeah. anything could happen. Yeah, maybe remove the barriers. Well, I'd go for Monaco. <laughs> if... Really? <laughs> Fuck, just sign no, your no. death wish now. No, I wouldn't. I'd go for Mexican Grand Prix because I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, the colours lovely, and lovely track. the stands and the way you drive through it all. Oh, it just looks absolutely amazing. And I would do it in the 2013 Red Bull car. 2013? Yeah. There was no halo then, was there? Uh, no, but I'd put a halo on it. Yeah, because Vettel slapped it in that car. And I reckon it was just a really quick car. How about you? Fair enough. I'd go for one of the V10 Ferraris. I would take it. V10? No, what's V10? France. A V10 engine. What are we now? V6. Is that slower then? They are a bit slower. So the cars are slower now than they used to be. It doesn't really work out like that. Because they got better aerodynamics throughout the rest of the car. Yeah, and just like multiple different things which affect, affect the speed. But um, no, one of the V10 Ferraris, because they're loud, bro. Mm, we like it loud they're as well. They're so loud. <laughs> and <laughs> and Where are you yeah, gonna take it? probably France. I like that track. Next up, we got one from Sam Smith. Can you both do your best Formula One race car impression, please? Here's mine, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> that was, like a that fucking, was actually really good. Sounds like a fucking mosquito. <laughs> Best race car impression. All right, okay. I'll do um, Yuki Sonoda's car in the last race. That was really fucking good. Yours? <laughs> that was really good. Broom, broom. Yeah. Like <laughs> it makes me cough. It makes me cough. Thanks for that, Sam. Thanks for that, Sam. Whoever you are. Next question is from Abinhav Krishnan Akuma. That is probably not how you say it, but I try my best. Okay, question for both of you. Uh, who do you think will win the WDC in 2025? Oh, great 20, question. So we got to look ahead. Man, wow. that's a fucking tough question. I'm going to go straight out there now and say Russell. I think Russell will be there in 2024. I think Verstappen's going to be winning a lot of championships. And I I'm think gonna, Leclerc will win a fair few as well. I'm going to go on a whim and, and say uh, Lando. Lando! Well, I'd love it to be Lando. Mm. I'd love it to be... I don't care. I mean, I'd love it to I'd be Mick to be Schumacher. Oh. Tell you what, Mickey. Change all the predictions. Mick, Mick, Mick. Mickey, Mickey. Mick through and through. Mickey, Mick, Mick. Mickey. Next question is from Aaron Aman Shunan. Who won the first F1 driver championship? <laughs> who won the first F1 driver championship? It's like saying what was the name of the bloke who first invented the fire? I <laughs> fucking know. <laughs> Just a simple one. When did you guys start watching F1? When did we start watching F1? Who was that, by the way? That was from Furious F1. Furious F1, thanks for the question. We first started watching F1 around about October last year, like properly together. I used to watch it with my dad when I was a kid. Grew up, became a teenager, didn't really care about it. And then it's come full circle. It was a lot of Drive to Survive. Like, don't get me wrong. We're, we've said this a thousand times. We are Drive to Survive fans. 
But we don't just watch Drive to Survive. Like, there's no Drive to Survive anymore. We watched it all. We watched the Grand Prix. We follow all the news. But yeah, we started watching it not long ago. Next question is from Jacob Coveney. Who do you think is the most underrated Formula One driver at the moment? Most underrated Formula One driver at the it's moment. It's a great question. Right now, on that grid, I think the most... I think I said to someone last week, and now I feel like I'm going to contradict myself. I've got two people. One, I would say Joe Guan Yu. That's who I, that's who I said last week, because mm. of how amazing he did in his rookie. Because he's done really fucking well. I don't really know much about his, of his, his career in yeah. racing, but like he did really well those first two races, so really good um and then uh, i don't know if he's underrated but maybe more so than the other guys carlos signs mm, yeah i don't think he's underrated as such but then he's not shown the spotlight as much like i get whenever they talk about like a ferrari red bull but battle it's leclerc and verstappen but obviously that's because they won the first two races yes but no i am with you i think mm. definitely signs is a bit underrated anyone else i think that would change though if signs went and won some races to be fair like so we'll see uh, the next question is from aaron spry what are your top three favorite tracks from this calendar season for f1 and your top three worst like least favorite as well and he's from australia he said Alrighty. he's in australia Alrighty. all right mate thanks for sending in a message i would have to say so my top three <laughs> top favorite three tracks. from this season and worst three i had it in my head and now um, i can't remember what it is saudi arabia What's the one? That, is that the one really dangerous yeah that's the one that they just did that's dangerous yes yeah that's in mine as well saudi so we'll both go with that what's the one where we always spin out on the game but that's pretty much every fucking that's, track that's Monza, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's Monza. I, I don't dislike any let's do what our favourite tracks are then yeah so Mexico's my favourite I haven't really got any least favourite tracks no I don't me neither Mexico's your favourite track yeah no I like France mate I like I've France. always said I like France as well um, France is amazing because it's so wide like there's them big, there's that big bit where you that is a chicane two quick corners yeah. where you fly through yeah so that wide so you can cut corners all day long see I like that that's the kind of racing <clears> I like Monaco is one of my favourites just because of the history and also Spa because of the history mm. those two I also think the Spanish Grand Prix is quite good I think Espanol never watched it next question is from Jack Mason and it's 29 seconds so this could say anything yes Jack Mason was good yes boys love the show uh, just a quick one who do you think out of all the youngsters that are coming through on the grid right now will retire with the most championships great question I think we should match his tone of voice so I think maybe I think Pierre Gasly has a, a lot of potential. Don't get me wrong, I agree. I think Pierre Gasly could get a significant amount of championships, but I don't think he's Pierre Gasly's at the same age as Verstappen. So you're already competing with someone in a better car. Mamma mia! I think if you're looking at the retirement, the person who's going to get the most amount of championships at the moment is going to be Verstappen. At the moment, on the current grid, who will have the most championships out of that? Copy solid. Copy solid. Agree with your logic. Yeah. Yeah. But then I also do think it wouldn't be hard for someone like Russell to out of nowhere slap it, go and get a, a bloody world championship this year oh, next fuck year. Me. Man, this is why it gets me so excited. And then Russell could because instantly be in the same You shoes. can't predict what the fuck is going to happen. Mate, I want this weekend, uh, in, in a way, like I want Red Bull to win every week. I want Verstappen to win every week. You'd want Ferrari to win every week. But I won't care if Red Bull or Ferrari aren't even in the top three this week just because I want it to be a good race. I want it to be mixed up. Mm. I want I want different people to win every race. I just think it makes it so much better. It'd be, it'd be nice to have more than like two teams or two people fighting for the championship. Definitely. Next question is from Jake Webb. Hello, Pit Stop. Hello. My question is actually regarding Mercedes. Now, with their early season issues of a porpoising, how long do you realistically think it's going to take for them to get a car that's worthy of a race winner? Oh yeah, well, Jake, you've, you've come to the you've come to the right people. You've... I tell you that, <laughs> definitely come to the right people. What do you think, then, Fab? How long until Mercedes get a race winner with the porpoising issues? Fuck, maybe this weekend. Well, they've made the changes. They've said I've read that it, it, there was never going to be a quick fix. So maybe like this weekend's only fifty percent fix. But uh, I don't know. Mercedes are top team. So. I'm going to take a gamble and say I think Mercedes will win a race in May. I think the Mercedes will win a race in May. So next month. So I think next month we've got Barcelona and we've got an Italy, I think. What, what reason are you behind that? I just think they're not quite there yet. I think they're going to keep, keep improving. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Mercedes on a podium this weekend, which you will see in my predictions. Oh, God. How long do you think then? Do you think Mercedes are there now? Or do you think they could, they could be there this weekend? Or do you think... No, I kind of agree. I think like maybe 50% this weekend and then, you know, maybe by Imola. Well, that, made, that, April. that reminds me, by Imola, Red Bull would have shaved 8kg off their car 
according to Lizzie McIntosh on TikTok. Bloody hell, that girl knows too much. 8kg, mate. Do you know how heavy that is? What would you say is 8kg? That's a lot to shave off a car, mate. It is a fair fucking amount. Um, it's a, I googled it. So I wanted to know how heavy 8kg was because I didn't know. I, I was like, is that a bag of sugar or something? No, it's like a bag of sand, probably. I googled it. It's the same weight as a television, a small mattress, a bag full of clothes, a, a box full of books. Mate, Wiping that off. That's such a car. weird fucking thing to say. One, how big is the box? And two, how big is the books and how many are in the box? I don't know, but basically, what they've learned is the box of books. <laughs> why would Google say that? I don't know. I, I don't even know if why. If anyone I was Googling, Googling that. wants to know what 8kg is, it's a box of books. <laughs> I don't even know why I was Googling that. But what you've learned here today is that by Imola, Red Bull would have shaved the television off their car. How do you think they just shave a television off? They just remove it. Just like take a piece off. They just remove the they TV. They just get at it with a razor and just. You shouldn't really be watching TV when they're fucking. Take little bits off anyway. with a knife. Don't know, really. I reckon a lot of it comes from under the car. Yeah, plastic. You can shave plastic down, mm. can't you? Bits and bobs. I look at it though, and I still think there's loads they could take off to make it lighter. Yeah, loads of black. Take the wheels off. <laughs> yeah, there's four of them. What do you reckon the heaviest part of the car is? Uh, the engine. Do you reckon the engine's heavier than the driver? Whoa. Good question. I don't know what the heaviest part of the car would be. Would you say all four wheels is heavier than the driver together? I don't really know, mate. I we need to get a wheel, don't, don't we? Know. That was something we want to do. We want to get a wheel and a um, the thing for the pit. So when we get guests on, they can come round and we can see how quick they can change a wheel. On I a swear car. I read somewhere that you could like pick an F1 car up yourself. Like, not fucking above your head, but you could, like, if you went to the back and, like, lifted the back. Yeah, they're meant to be quite it, lightweight. That's what makes you think. Maybe the driver is, like, the heaviest thing in the car. Potential. But 8kg seems like quite a lot. But anyway, next question. Gracie Haddon. Haddon. I always pronounce everyone's name so <laughs> wrong. But, yeah, Gracie's coming up. Hello. I absolutely love your podcast. I just wanted to say... It Let's go, Gracie. Really it's a great idea, and I love listening to it every week. Um, do you think you are finally accepted into the F1 community, or do you still think there are gatekeepers blocking your entry into the world of F1? <laughs> great question. Good question. How do you feel about where we sit within the F1 community, Fab? I think we've had a good reception, considering... <clears throat> Like, I remember, like, in the first couple of podcasts, me saying, like, it is one of those sort of closed off, like, elite sports, which is going to be really hard for us to break into. But I feel like it's been really kind of easy. There's obviously been people who think that, like, we're a fucking couple of idiots. <laughs> and you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <clears throat> However, a lot of people, including yourself, Gracie, have clearly been very nice to us. But quite honestly, like, I don't really care too much what people think about us because everyone was new at one point so if anyone's gonna hate on us then mate i'm completely with you nothing stays me in the slightest like any comment that comes in like these guys don't know anything i like, i'm like yeah i know like or, yeah you yeah. know what i mean i just banter with anyone i don't really we're not people it doesn't really affect us if people don't like it but what fab said is spot on we've had so much positive stuff i mean spotify have put us in the bloody essential f1 playlist like if you go on sports on spotify and click F1, it says Essential F1 Podcasts, and bloody pit stuff is there. It's so great, it's great. if we're put, being put there, we must be doing something right. Don't get it twisted. It's not as if we don't fuck it, like care about people. Like any criticism is is good criticism. So anyone that does, anyone who does say like you guys need to improve here and here, then we'll listen to it hundred percent and and take it on board. But next question, Mika Brown. Where are we at crowdfunding that yacht for Monaco? <laughs> oh my god. Hundred percent in. Oh, oh where, where are we at with the yacht? <laughs> so basically, we were gonna get. I'm still building know, it. <laughs> yeah, we, well, we were gonna hire a yacht and charge five pound tickets. I did a bit of research. Uh, I don't know whether it's gonna happen with five pound tickets. We might have to up it a little bit to like a grand each. <laughs> It'd have to be a pretty big fucking yacht to get enough fivers in to build a fucking get a yacht. But yeah, no, I I would assume it's not happening. But we're working on it. But we're maybe, working on it. Maybe the, the racing gods will have their way. She sent one more and she said, this is the actual question. Okay. Do either of you have a day job? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I do. I do. What do you do? I am a builder. Nice. What did you do at work today? What was your highlight of the day today? There was no highlight of today. 
<laughs> you had something on your car today, didn't you? Yes. You got in trouble today. Yes. What happened? I got a parking ticket, Jake. <laughs> How many parking tickets have you had in the last month? Five. <laughs> <laughs> park your car in a proper place. <laughs> Don't park illegally, it's bad. It's bad.